right. Hello, everyone. Um, we are going to be joined just momentarily by me. Hey, right. Hello, everyone. Oh. Um, we are going to be joined just momentarily by. Oh, goodness. Sorry. I had like double echo happening here. So we're going to be joined momentarily by Kay and Ian with the BC Birds Litter, um, a couple of our wonderful breeder caretakers. And so uh, with one of our newest litters. So we'll just wait for them uh, to turn on their camera and their audio, and then we will get started. But I see people joining in and you can tell us in the comment section where you are tuning in from. And if you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to answer them. And, uh, and you will get to meet each of these little nuggets. So um, before we get started, um, I will introduce all of us. So my name is Tara Doherty. I um, manage communications at PADS. Um, and it is my absolute pleasure to host Tune In Tuesday. And Tune In Tuesday is an opportunity where we connect with someone in the PADS community and learn more about them and their role. Um, and also sometimes like today, get to meet uh, some of our dogs as well. So um, I am going to introduce you. Um, our camera's kind of panning around here. So um, Kay and Ian, uh, if you can just unmute yourselves, because um, I see that there we go. There we go. So Kay and Ian, um, I'm going to ask you the question I ask everybody um, as we get started here, which is, tell us how you became part of the PADS family, PADS village. Okay. Do you want to? Go for it. Okay, um, I'm going to turn the camera. He's getting shy. Well, we were um, raisers about eight years ago with uh, our fellow Ajax, who we uh, he um, got released, and so we kept him. And then we were doing dog sitting and things like that. And then we decided that, um, given that we were retired, not going to places like offices and transit, that maybe this would be a better fit for us and the, the program. So we waited, geez, we waited a while to get a, a breeding dog. So this is our second litter with Autumn and uh, our pups, this they're just over four weeks old, just like four weeks plus yesterday, going into their fifth week. So that's why. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for that lovely intro. So now we're going to get to the part which I'm sure people are excited yeah. about. But yeah, before we do, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask, I can see we've got some people on Zoom and some people on Facebook Live. So if you're joining us, tell us in the comment section where uh, you are tuning in from. If you're on Facebook Live, you can do that in the comments just below the live video. Um, and if you have any questions, you can throw those in there. And then if you're joining us on Zoom, um, you can either click the chat button if you want to just share where you're tuning in from, or you can hit the Q&A button if you have a question, and we will try and answer your questions on air. But with that, we're going to start by introducing you to some of these cuties. Look at these little tan point paws. Yeah. Who is this beautiful little creature? So this is, let me see, collar is This is Toey. Toey. This is Toey. And Toey's oh got God. lots of this tan coloring, which apparently is quite special it's under cute. the chin. And she's got a lot of attitude. She's beautiful. <laughs> lots of attitude and lots of flashy markings. So yes. um, we always get lots of questions about all of um, our black and tan puppies. They are purebred puppies. Um, they, um, but somewhere back in guide dog lines, black and tan happens in Labradors. And um, it came into our lines through our lovely man, Pride, who carries it. Um, and then of course we have so many Pride descendants that it shows up. It shows up in other lines too, not just Prides, but uh, um, yeah. And um, Autumn's litter, actually, Mama Autumn. Um, I remember texting Jackie when that litter was born and I said, I feel like I have a litter of pound puppies here. There's so many markings. Every puppy in the litter, I think there was 10 of them were unique and different. So Autumn has a nice big white blaze on her chest. And yeah, some of them were black and tan and some of them were brindle and some of them were yellow and it was quite funny. So Huge you, Autumn. You, Autumn. Yeah. All right. So we met. Um, okay, let's, we, it, so we got it, seven of them. So let's see. So how seven. About Ian's doing the picking up and um, okay, take, so. take take the purple one or purple. yeah purple. So this is uh, 
<laughs> sleepy <laughs> babies. Yeah. So this is purple is Finch. This is Finch. Oh, well, Finch has a yeah. special place in my heart because as you know, I have a little baby boy named Finch. So. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. yeah. So Finch is quite adorable. Finch, yeah. yeah. Little girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Pretty we had five good. girls and two boys. Yes. And then she got any. Yeah. So they're um, three of them are like quite light colored with yeah. speckles. So she's in that category. Who else do you want to get here? Yeah. Not the same little socks, but oh, oh we got some noise. Oh, yeah. and how about this guy? That's uh, Stellar. That's Stellar. He, Stellar's dreaming a lot right now. Yeah. So he's, you want to pick him up? Uh, okay, I can yeah. pick him up. Hey, yeah, buddy. yeah, he'll be all right. I picked him up and scared him up the other morning, and I got a lot of. A lot of. He let me know. He let me know. <laughs> like, hey, I'm not impressed. Yeah. Well, and at this age, that startle reflex. Uh, yeah, yeah. More neurological he, he than anything. Really else. gave me what for. You're yeah. Disturbing him. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, oh, he's you're so a big good. boy too. Yeah, Maybe. and you're a bit very wiggly. Yeah. yeah, that's stellar. So for yeah. those of you that don't know, this litter is all named after BC birds and yeah. uh, stellar is actually the BC bird, which I didn't know until yeah. we here, so. Yeah, I hadn't fully appreciated that either. I thought a different bird. Went. Okay, who else we got? Maybe pick up the other black and tan dog. Sure. Her. Oh, you have two black and tans. In this yes, we do. We have oh, two. Already yeah, we already did that. Here's. Here's. here's Flicker. Oh my goodness, look at those markings. And who yeah. is that? Flicker? That's said? Flicker. Yeah. Oh, Flicker, you are very handsome. Yeah, I think there's going to be some jealousy. Yeah. And it's interesting, yeah. the two dark dogs tend to sleep with each other. Yeah. The two tan dogs sleep together, and the three <laughs> sort of blonde yeah. tan yeah. modeled ones, they, yeah. they tend to congregate yeah. together. It's quite interesting. I've noticed that. It, other letters too, how they yeah. you just um, sort of know, yeah, like puppies gather, so yeah, but they've really that color has like been more and more when they were first born, it was just under their bum, and yeah. then it just like really mm. progressed. So that's yeah, they yeah well, okay, yeah, yeah, they, they, they oh, <laughs> that's actually some of the most distinct black and tan markings I've seen. Um, yeah. we we had a few a few years ago, um one of Naya's litter, the motorcycle litter. So there was yeah. Suki and Benelli were quite distinct like this that. This one's got the signature little chin that his mom's got. Yeah, little gray. Little gray. tiny, yeah. just a tiny little chin, little white. Okay. And he's a kisser too. He's just a like kisser. Long. How about this one here? Pick up this one right Which? there. It's right here in front of me, right there. Okay. Oh. Okay, here we go. Piper. Piper, yeah, Piper four. And it's not, it's short for sandpiper. So cute. Hello, little sand viper puppy. You yeah, are look at you, eh? She's oh. a big girl, too. She's a big girl. You're one of the biggest ones, aren't you? Yes, you biggest. are. I think she might be. I haven't. Yes, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the big yawn. Yeah. Big they, big yawn. They, they ate... Uh, about an hour ago yes I think. hour and a oh, half ago here we go again solid food it's the first time they had solid food before they had uh yeah. mother's milk okay and then it's and, keep going okay hey. <laughs> it's flicker no it's not no it's finch, it's finch. <laughs> oh you got finch again all right yeah. there we just get two visits with finch hi pretty girl finchy is finchy's the littlest one Teeny tiny. Yeah. Yeah. She's a oh, little one. And she's she's still pretty good. She's not as little as that last little one we had. No. Yeah, yeah she's a, yeah. Rakem's? Uh, not Rakem. Oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Kemble. Kemble, yeah. But, yeah. but the, she's so sweet too. She's got a really nice little. I'm kind of warming up to this little one. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Who else did we get? So who do we uh, have left? Rufus and Sarah? Rufus, Rufus, Rufus. And sparrows. Let's just oh. see. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's got teeth. I'm gonna sit. Come on. Oh Come on. yeah, here you you're getting somebody new. Somebody's getting nibbled on. Get Rufus or Sparrow. Oh, this is probably Rufus right there. Yeah. Yeah. Big boy. Oh, big boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Holy, holy. Wake up, buddy. 
Oh, it's so red. That's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, let's have a little pan of the body here. Oh, yeah. Well, not as, yeah, there you go. Look at you. Oh, you're another sleepy puppy. Yeah. You're another sleepy puppy. And you got a little bit of a little bit of a sock. Not much. I know what you're starting to show your teeth. You got little nubs in there. Mm. Little nubs coming through. Yeah, that's okay. And then Oh. What happened to sparrows? Oh, we're getting our feet licked. We're getting yeah. lots of toes licked. And I think we need sparrows. So that was we just we're always doing puppy counts. Oh here. There, there. Uh, One, two, three, four, must, five, that must six, be seven. that must be sparrow. Must be. Yep. You're just <laughs> I always felt very emotional about sparrow, whichever one that is. <laughs> there we go. Here she comes. Yes, yeah, sparrow. Come on, pal. Oh, there you go. There she there we are. Oh, hello, dumpling. Hello. You want to do your debut? Oh, Here's your debut. You're, you're another pretty girl. Hello, Sparrow. Yeah. Well, what a beautiful litter of puppies. They are. They're, they're all very so good. different and unique. I love yeah. even just the range of different colors and yeah. yellow and all of those good things. So, this yeah. is also a very special litter in other ways. Um, so um, yeah, one of our volunteer families um, has committed to sponsor all the puppies in this litter that are staying at pads in memory of one of our wonderful volunteers, Neil, yeah. um, who passed away just recently. So, and they um, raised Autumn. And, yeah. and so um, what a special way uh, to honor someone who is such an important part of our village. And so um, we're just uh, thrilled um, by that. And so um, these, it will be neat to follow these beautiful little puppies along in their journey and uh, kind of see where they go. So, um, so at four weeks old, you mentioned they've just started eating solid food. And um, so how was it, did they enjoy their first experience? Were they back? It wasn't bad. The first time was a little, you know, kind of not too sure. And then we stepped in it and we moved around. But let's see, I guess, yeah, we've done about four feeds and now we're getting the hang of it. You know, we know what to do. Oh, now I'm getting really nibbled on here. Yeah, they love yeah. my, they love to feed. Yeah, I have a little snip. So going slow and then that's you know but so far so good yeah and Kay was mentioning they're a very relaxed litter yeah compared to sure. the last yeah. one yeah, yeah they're was, well they are in the autumn is super chill super yeah. chill like I mean like she cares a lot about what we're doing right now not <laughs> <laughs> no, thank she, you. Yeah. but she's very very yeah attractive. she'll come around she does what she but she actually um yeah, she goes in and out quite a bit and she just comes to them when she needs, you know, and yeah, she's super relaxed and all the other guys, you know, guys, everybody like my shoes. Yeah, yeah, you like my shoes. Mm -hmm. Nice and salty, aren't you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, for those of you that are watching, if you have any questions, feel free to jump into either the Q and A section on Zoom if you have questions, um, or um, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you're welcome to uh, post in the comments if you have questions about the puppies or really anything else pads related. You're more than welcome to to ask, and we will do our very best to answer those questions. But we will stay on for a minute or two here um, if there aren't any questions, just to let you kind of bask in this puppy cuteness. And maybe we'll get uh, Kay to drop the camera down to the floor level and and watch some of this adorable bitey face that's happening in the corner here. Um, it's really neat as the puppies hit this age yeah, and they they interact and play yeah. with each other. Yeah. Um, I don't want them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Little baby bitey face. <laughs> I feel like I can smell the puppy breath. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got puppy. 
Yeah. What do you think? Like, you watching, we are also currently recruiting your caretakers. So if rearing a litter like this, like Kate and Ian are doing, um, is something that might be of interest to you. Um, our our breeding dogs get assigned to a breeder caretaker and they live with them throughout their breeding career. Um, and then typically are adopted by them uh, once they retire. Um, um but uh, and then rearing these little babies and pads provides the equipment and training and all that good stuff but we are actively recruiting breeder caretakers right now so um and uh we've got a couple of breeding girls that are looking for their soft landing to welcome their puppies into so if you're interested you can go check out pads.ca slash volunteer i um, mean there's information there about how to apply so um, but with that, I would like to stay on here all day long and watch these little monkeys play. But I also know that being a breeder caretaker is a big job. <laughs> so I so will, a bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will give you folks uh, some of your time uh, back to your day to keep up with these little monkeys. Uh, the laundry is never done. So it but it's lovely to meet these little guys and share them yeah. with the world. It's uh I didn't realize until we came on today that that you had some black and tans in this litter too. So oh really? Oh yeah, no, it was a big little, deal. Very little litter of puppies. I absolutely yeah. love all of yeah. the coloring. So yeah, yeah. No, when they were born, Jackie and Krista were going, oh <laughs> we were quite excited. So yeah. Um, so there's a, one question here. And so um yes, um uh answering the question for um, Ella and Alex here. Um, this is Autumn and the BC birds litter. And so the question is, are you supposed to watch and supervise uh, the puppies from their birth until the moment they leave for razors homes? Is it a 24 seven thing? Um, do you want me to answer that? Or do you want to answer that? Well, that I'll say hard yes. <laughs> and then you can give the details. Yeah. <laughs> So we do want, we do want these puppies supervised. Now, certainly our breeder caretakers sleep, et cetera. The puppies are um, in the house with them, but the first, you know, week or so we tend to kind of sleep in the same room with the puppies and mama, just in case, uh, you know, somebody gets rolled over on or whatever is happening. Um, but, um, you know, the, the amount of, uh, it is a ton of work, but we also have a wonderful breeder caretaker community. So um, we have, I want to say we have about 10 dogs, breeding dogs in the lower mainland uh, that live with various breeder caretakers. And so having that community of other volunteers, not everybody has a litter on the ground at the same time. And so, um, and then we have a few folks too that, you know, are litter sitters. So people that aren't breeder caretakers, but um, will help out uh, with litters so that our lovely breeder caretakers can sometimes go out for an evening or go to a family function or whatever it is and have someone that understands our protocols and everything else look after the babies but um but it's a full-time it is a full-time job during the well-being or during the the eight-week kind of period and the other piece of that is not just keeping them safe but also supporting some of the things best practices so that they get started on the right foot and start or right paw in terms of house training, et cetera. So we clean up after them right away if they ever have an accident on the lino as opposed to on their pee pads or uh, tray, et cetera, so that they start to learn that, you know, there is a place to go to the washroom and there's a place to play and a place to eat and all that good stuff. And that really helps our puppy raisers when they leave at eight weeks that they're started on really good house training foundations um, that um, it isn't just a free for all. Um, and so, but that requires somebody being there um, all the time to kind of clean up as accidents happen, as opposed to just kind of, you know, cleaning out the pen a couple of times a day and having them on wood chips or something like that. There's lots of ways that puppies are reared, but our protocols kind of um, we recognize that these are service dogs um, in the making, and, and so we want them to have the best possible start. And each week as well, there's exercises and things that we do with them. When we first came on air here, uh, um, Ian was trimming toenails. And so um, puppy toenails grow very quickly, almost as quickly as the puppies themselves, maybe more so. And so, you know, having their little nails trimmed and learning that that's a positive experience. So all of those 
those kinds of things take time. So it is a big commitment. Um, I can speak from experience. It's a really fun thing to do as a family um, and have kids involved, et cetera. So, um, and uh, I'm just, Cameron is asking a question about mobility dogs, how they would feel about going kayaking. Um, lots of our service dogs actually uh, participate in different uh, sp water sports and things with their clients, whether it's stand up paddle boarding or kayaking or um, things like that. So um, some of them absolutely would be fine with it, but it's something when we're matching a service dog to a client, we want to know those things in advance so that we can make sure that um, we're matching you with a dog that's appropriate. And that might mean that we're matching you with the dog that isn't water obsessed, that wants to dive into the water every time they see it, um, as opposed uh, to, uh, you know, one that uh, is maybe just going to be a little more relaxed around the water. Um, but all of those things are taken into consideration when we're matching our dogs to our clients. So if that's a sport you enjoy as a client, or as an applicant, I mean, we're going to try and find you the right dog uh, to make that match. So um, we take into account all sorts of factors. So um, just be sure to mention that um, in um, either your interview or your application process, Cameron, and um, good luck in uh, your weight and your match to a dog. So uh, we get really excited uh, when applicants are watching because it could be that one of these dogs down the road um, winds up being the dog that is matched to you. Um, they go through this process relatively quickly in the whole scheme of things. So, um, and, uh, yeah. so thanks for asking those questions. They're great questions. Um, if anybody else has any questions, you can throw them in the Q&A box on Zoom. Or if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can just add them in the comment section below the video and we will try and answer them. Um, I'm just looking to see if I've missed any here because there were a bunch that came in while I was talking or a bunch of notifications came in while I was talking. So, um, I think we've answered all the questions. Oh my goodness. Who is this one? It's Rufus. Oh, Rufus. Oh, Rufus again. You are so cute, sir. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, He's like, I, I, got, I got my close up and everything. So, yeah. um, all righty. Well, I'm going to sign off, but before I do, I'm just going to remind um, our viewers of a couple of things that are coming up. So, our shred event is coming up on May 27th um, at the Burnaby campus. And so, if you have any confidential documents you need shredded, uh, we are the place to come. And no, the dogs don't do the shredding. We have a wonderful uh, company, uh, Urban Impact, that we work with that comes out and uh, does the shredding for us. Um, it's sponsored by Winnie Pack Realty. So, we're thrilled um, to have Winnie Pack again this year as our sponsor. Uh, but come on out. It's just kind of a drive through deal. You can kind of come in and it's by donation. Um, and all the proceeds will go towards helping fund um, our program and our training. And then also um, our MOVE event uh, has moved this year. So it's not in the summer. It's going to be launching at the end of the month here. Um, and so for those of you that know what MOVE is, uh, um, get ready to register. And if you don't know what MOVE is, it is our, you know, take your dog for a walk, run, dance, swim, kayak, um, whatever you want to do. Um, and, um, but also change lives at the same time. So you create a little fundraising page, or you can create a team and get your friends and family on board or your coworkers, and you can all move together. Um, but the goal is to raise much needed funds to um, place more of these life-changing dogs. So that registration is opening, uh, coming up really quick here at the end of the month. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, there will be info going out on our Facebook page and by email on all of those things. So if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us. Um, our email is reachus at pads.ca um, or you can check out um, our website. Um, and I notice uh, Meredith is um, plunking stuff in uh, to the comment section here. Thank you, Meredith. Um, and then um, and then Cameron, to answer your questions, you can just email applicant services. So the email address that you've been communicating with, just pop them a note and they can just add that to your file. There's That's no big deal at all. So uh, be sure to kind of send that information uh, through though, um, because the trainers will look at that when they're they're looking at making those matches. So, all right. Um, thank you everyone for joining here. Thank you so much, um, Kate and Ian for sharing. Yep. Uh, your home and your day and your time with us. And more importantly, thank you for 